Hello everybody and welcome to That's Football. We're back with another big debate as we talk about Liverpool and Chelsea. Are they in crisis? Is the season over? And you know what? I think there's a thirst for conversation in the football uh, uh, conversation, but there's not necessarily a thirst for knowledge. Um, on the last video, I, I was talking about Arsenal and a few Arsenal fans clipped it up. I'm grateful for that. And they were saying, Goldbridge speaking facts about Arsenal. I don't know if I'm speaking facts. Some, some Arsenal fans will agree, some won't. But I think that... There's not a responsibility, but I think you always get a better football conversation when you actually analyse things in a in a in a, in a, in a level-headed way instead of just being sensationalist because that's what you think people want. And what I mean is, I've seen a lot of conversation over the last few days on YouTube, on media, on radio, discussing Liverpool and Chelsea season being over already. The title race is over already because Liverpool and Chelsea have had a bad start to the season. Now, I did a video, video last week talking about Liverpool being in crisis, and if they weren't in crisis last week, they are definitely in crisis now. Two points from nine, they look unrecognisable, and we'll delve into that in a minute. Chelsea, Chelsea, four points from nine, don't look right, don't look right, comprehensively beaten by Leeds. Are they in crisis? Yes, they are. Are their seasons over? Of course they're not. I mean, from Chelsea's point of view, they're three points behind Manchester City. Now, Manchester City will be the benchmark, but Manchester City drew with Newcastle. Their comeback was fantastic from 3-1 down, but they didn't deserve to win that game. And they will face tougher teams than Newcastle. Respect to Newcastle, but Newcastle couldn't go to Brighton and win. Brighton are a good side, so they could give Man City a game. Not to mention the Manchester United's, the Arsenal's, the Chelsea's, the Liverpool's, the Spurs. So I'm hopeful that this Premier League season could be very, very interesting. I think the World Cup adds to that. I think everybody basically from the top six is going to be playing two games a week until the World Cup. And then the World Cup, there could be a hangover. I don't think Man City's squad, when you look at the bench against Newcastle, is as good as it was last year. Liverpool certainly isn't. But look, Manchester City were my favourite. So what do I think about... Liverpool and Chelsea and is their season over before it's already started just pure fiction pure ridiculous pure fantasy of course their season's not over as I said Chelsea we'll talk about in a moment but they're three points behind Man City but Liverpool look I've seen Liverpool's last three games we did two watch-alongs for their first two against Palace and, and Fulham and then obviously they're playing my team on Monday night what I would say about Liverpool is that midfield is a problem and this has been a problem at United in a very big level for a number of years and you can have a very good front three and you can have a very good back five but if your midfield can't be competitive and win the midfield battle then you will struggle and they have struggled in their first three games to win the midfield battle they've had the possession but possession can be side to side. It, it, it's not normal Liverpool possession. They don't look like Liverpool at the moment. And that is their big problem. They, in, in previous years, years, I think they would have found a way to beat Palace and Fulham. And they'd have six points instead of two. Um, the Manchester United game they didn't deserve to win. But Man United Liverpool can go like that sometimes. I remember Man United being the dominant force. And Liverpool still winning games at Old Trafford and Anfield. Danny Murphy. So... Those things can happen, but Liverpool's problem is their midfield at the moment and they have got injuries. And also, they just don't look right. I know they've got injuries, but it's the start of a season. I think there's a bit of a hangover from last year where they were relentless. They put so much effort into it. They played every competitive game they could. And I just don't think that summer's been long enough. I think it's been a blink of an eye and you're back starting again. And they, they, they had a disappointing season last year. They could have done something memorable. They won a couple of trophies. They didn't win the, t the big two, the Champions League or the Premier League. And I think it's a bit of a hangover and the injuries. But for Liverpool, they are their own club. They, they make their own decisions. Um, many of their fans would say, I'd rather we don't panic buy and buy a midfielder. I do think that they, they should have bought a midfielder. And I think when you've got people like Yuri Tillemans available for 25 million, is that a panic buy to buy you know a player in his mid-20s who's Premier League proven, who is better than Milner and better than Harvey Elliott and would have slotted straight into that team. And Thiago, let's be honest, isn't going to stay fit. So a player like that is not a panic buy, and I, but it would probably would represent a panic buy for Liverpool now. Um, but maybe they should have been looking at that sort of a signing. And I, look, I don't think Liverpool are out of the title race. That's what I'm trying to say. I don't think they can't win the Champions League. I don't think they can continue to play that badly. And let's not forget their next two games are Bournemouth at home and Newcastle at home. So with those two games, I think you would expect Liverpool to take, and they have to take six points. And maybe the crisis will deepen, but they have Everton away after that, and then they've got uh, Wolves at home. So their next four games, I think Liverpool would look at it and go, yeah, we, we before they play Chelsea, we've got to take maximum points. And then suddenly the league table looks very, very different. I 
can't say what cha- what what Liverpool should do in the champ- in the transfer window, but I do think that um, that midfield is the major problem with them, and I do think that they are in a crisis, and I think two points from nine is a crisis, but I still don't think it puts them out of the title race um, because I just don't think Man City at the moment have shown that they're going to go and win and get ninety nine points. I, I, I haven't seen that yet. They may well do it. They were fantastic in the second half when they came back, but I still think there's a vulnerability of Man-, Man City, and I also think there is a where Liverpool are struggling and maybe Man City aren't struggling yet is that Liverpool are vulnerable and teams opening, you know, start the season and it always happens. Teams are up for it, they're energetic, they're newly promoted, they've got new signings, everybody's working hard. The Liverpools and Man Cities tend to start banging home the advantage from about October till March when teams get into the groove of, yeah, we're going to be mid-table, we're going to be relegation. You know, that that's when... There's always this enthusiasm in the Premier League at the start, and you always get results like this. Liverpool need to bounce back, I and I and I, I expect them to do that. I still think they're the second best team in England behind Man City, and I expect them to be there at the end of the season. But it's a crisis. But people who say, "Oh, season's over," and they're out of the title race. What if Liverpool win at the weekend and Man City drop points? Um, I don't know who Man who are Man City playing this weekend. Actually, I mean that's a that's a very good point, but. I mean, they probably won't drop points because they've dropped points against uh, Newcastle, but Man City are away to Villa on... Uh, no, they're not. That's I'm looking in August. They're not. Uh, Man City are home to Palace, so they're probably going to win that. But so will Liverpool beat Bournemouth. And then midweek, Man City are... What are Man City doing midweek? Oh, God, where are you, Man City? Home to Forest. So, yeah, they're... Man City probably going to win the next two games. But if Man City lost the game and Liverpool won a game, suddenly that league table looks very different. So I think... Liverpool just need to start winning games. Um, they, they can't afford to lose any of the next two, Bournemouth and Newcastle. And they need to get some of their players back. And then, as we know with Liverpool, they are they are relentless when they get into form. And look, even if Man City start winning all their games and Liverpool start winning all their games, that points is seven points. That's not season over. And there's the Champions League. As for Chelsea, look, I think with Chelsea... <laughs> They were comprehensively beaten by Leeds. Are they in crisis, Chelsea? Well, look at the start to the season they've had. They won at Everton, they lost to Leeds at Leeds, and they drew with Spurs. They should have beat Spurs, so they should have six points, and therefore they'd only be a point behind Man City. So I feel that, I suppose the the big question is, whose position would you rather be in, Chelsea or Liverpool's? And I still think Liverpool are a better team than Chelsea, and they're only two points ahead of them, behind them. So... Chelsea, for me, are a really difficult one to to look at. Um, I think there's over-exaggeration. New owners coming in later in the summer prevented you from going for people like Haaland and Nunez and left you with a transfer market that had been somewhat exploited by other teams. Um, I think Chelsea are ambitious enough to sign any player. I just don't think they had the power to do that at the start of the window. And therefore, as we're seeing with Manchester United now, you get into the situation where you've got money, but people know you've got money and they know that you're desperate. And desperate and money is not a good mix. Now, they have made good signings with Sterling and Koulibaly, um, but now they're looking at Gordon, which I just think is, as an outsider, I think that is desperate. I do. I, I don't. I think that Gordon looks like he could be a good Everton player. I don't think he looks like he's a £60 million signing for Chelsea to solve their problems. I might be missing something here. But I think that signing is terrifying and I would be scared of it if I was a Chelsea fan. Are Chelsea in crisis? I don't think they are. I think four points from nine is not ideal. But the Spurs game, they should have won. The Leeds game, these things happen at the start of the season and Leeds are a good team. So I think how Chelsea bounce back over their next two games is going to be very important. Leicester at home on on, on Saturday and then they will have another home game. I believe. No, they're away to Southampton. So... They do need to be taking six points there. And I think if Chelsea drop any points from the next two games, their season does become quite difficult because they're vulnerable. Um, And I think the vulnerabilities of Chelsea are far harder to solve than the vulnerabilities of Liverpool. Liverpool have got players to come back in and make that midfield strong. Chelsea don't, for me, if they don't start scoring goals with what they've got, they haven't got players to score goals. And I don't think Gordon solves that. Chelsea look like a defensive outlet that are going to be hard to score against you would expect. Leeds didn't find it that hard and they look like they're not going to score many goals themselves. So I think for Chelsea, keep an eye on it. But I have a lot of sympathy for Chelsea because I do think that the the sale of the club wasn't at the right time. It it meant they were always playing catch-up and their transfer market activity has been sporadic. 
I don't think that's Tuchel's fault. I don't think it's the players' fault. And I certainly don't think it's the fans' fault. It just feels a little bit like over-eager to impress. We've got money. We will spend money. But can you have a good transfer window in the last two weeks of the transfer window? And I'll bring it back to Manchester United again. We're about to spend £80 million on a player who's worth 50 in Anthony. It puts a massive amount of pressure on that player. And it exposes how desperate you are. Well, Chelsea are in that situation as well. Like Everton probably don't want to sell Gordon and, and Chelsea are offering 60 million for him. Now, if Chelsea can go and get a top-class striker, then I think things change very, very quickly. But I think Chelsea are more uncertain than Liverpool between me and you. I do. I think Liverpool have that stability and can get back into that groove with predominantly a team that's one of the best teams in Europe. But I think with Chelsea, they are the unknown. There is a lot of new players coming in. There's a lot of players that have gone. There is a new owner. And as I've said before, I don't think Tuchel will be sacked. But I wouldn't be surprised if he was sacked at some point if the season starts to go badly. Because this new owner seems very set on what he wants. And if he decides there's any conflict or, or, or friction with Tuchel, he may go, well, this isn't the manager I want anyway because I inherited him from the previous owner. So Chelsea's situation is more precarious than Liverpool's, I feel. But I don't think, I would not be surprised if come the end of the season, the top three is Man City, Liverpool and Chelsea. To say the season is over after three games is ridiculous. To say that they're in crisis, yes, they're at different levels of crisis. That's not an acceptable start to the season for Liverpool by their high standards. And Chelsea's start to the season is very curious. It's not, it's hard to predict. So that's not what you want. And they are levels of a crisis, but they are not season over. And I still think both of them can have really good seasons. They do need to get on with it very, very quickly. And obviously both of them have got home games at the weekend that they desperately need to win and they need to go on a bit of a run. But those two, those two teams can do it. And, 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 and overarching all of this, when we talk about crisis and seasons over, I don't mind a bit of a crisis, but I don't like season over. I think we've got a fantastic Premier League that started off so well and we should nurture that and celebrate that. And I personally hope Man City and Arsenal and Spurs start dropping points as well because I'd like to see a congested Premier League. I'd love it. I don't think we will see it. But wouldn't you love to see Brighton and Newcastle close to Liverpool's and Chelsea's and Man City's? I'd love to see that. It'd certainly help my team, Man United, catch up as well. So, look, get your comments in below. I do think that there is, um, and I don't know why it is, but I think there is a desire to over-egg the pudding and sensationalise. Oh, Chelsea and Liverpool season's over already. Bullshit. Of course it's not. People can have a crisis. There's many a season where Manchester United under Sir Alex Ferguson started off badly. And I was like, oh God, maybe we're not going to win the league this year. And then come May, we did. So look, fasten your seatbelts. Let's hope the Premier League continues how it is. And get your comments in below. Make sure you subscribe and I'll speak to you on the next one.